Hey, everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Wednesday morning. So today I'd like to read you an article, but before I read you that article, I just want to give you the preface of it. Two years ago, I did a video titled The Erosion of Freedom and Privacy Occur Because We Consent to It. And in this video, I was discussing a Financial Times article titled Apple Plans to Scan U.S. Phones for Child Abuse Imagery. And we discussed the fact that they had something going on where if you were uploading your photos to iCloud, they would be hashing those photos in your phone and then comparing them to known hashes in a CSAM database, and if they matched, then reporting you to the authorities, because these systems have never had mistakes in the past. And this is obviously very concerning for anybody that cares about their privacy, for anybody that's had, let's say, a video on YouTube flagged for harmful and hateful content when it was a cat meowing, they may be concerned if something is scanning the images on their phone and then comparing them to known CSAM and then reporting you to the feds. This is one of those issues that even if you are somebody who is innocent is a serious issue because, again, you have stuff like this where Google reported a customer for pedo behavior over doctor's photos. A dad took a picture of his naked toddler for the doctor, Google flagged him as a criminal, and he had to spend a year dealing with the police as a result of that. This is a serious issue, even if you do not necessarily believe you're doing anything wrong. So today I'd like to read you this blog from Jeffrey Paul. I think it is something that many more people should read, and I'm surprised that it has not gotten more attention since it's been out for three days now. It says, Apple has begun scanning your local image files without consent. Preface, I don't use iCloud. I don't use an Apple ID. I don't use the Mac App Store. I don't store photos in the Mac OS Photos application, even locally. I never opted into Apple Network services of any kind. I use Mac OS software on Apple hardware. Today, I was browsing some local images in a subfolder of my Documents folder. Some HEIC files taken with an iPhone and copied to the Mac using the image capture program used for dumping photos from an iOS device attached with a USB cable. I use a program called Little Snitch, which alerts me to network traffic attempted by the programs that I use. I have all network access denied for a lot of Apple OS level apps because I'm not interested in transmitting any of my data whatsoever to Apple over the network mostly because Apple turns over customer data on over 30,000 customers per year to federal police without any search warrant per Apple's own self-published transparency report. I'm good without any of that nonsense, thank you. And so am I. Imagine my surprise when, browsing those images in the Finder, Little Sinich told me that Mac OS is now connecting to Apple APIs via a program named Media Analysis D, Media Analysis Daemon, a background process for analyzing media files. Media Analysis D wants to connect to api.smut.apple.com via private relay TCP on port 443. No thank you. It's important to contextualize this. In 2021, Apple announced their plan to begin client-side scanning of media files on device to detect copy-paste so that devices that end users have paid for can be used to provide police surveillance in direct opposition to the wishes of the owner of the device. CP, of course, being one of the classic four horsemen of the Infocalypse trotted out by those engaged in misguided attempts to justify the unjustifiable violations of our human rights. Apple has repeatedly declared in their marketing materials that privacy is a human right, yet they offer no explanation whatsoever as to why those of us who do not traffic in copy-paste might wish to have such privacy-violating software running on our devices. It was widely speculated at the time that they were doing this to try to get the FBI off their back so they could roll out client-side end-to-end encryption for iCloud, something they were not at all at the time doing, which provided and preserved a backdoor in iMessage privacy, specifically for the FBI. There was a large public backlash. Apple likely expected this. Some weeks later, in an apparent but not really capitulation, Apple published the following statement. Based on the feedback from customers, advocacy groups, researchers, and others, we have decided to take additional time over the coming months to collect input and make improvements before releasing these critically important child safety features. And the media erroneously reported this as Apple reversing course. And Jeffrey provides a citation here to a Wired article that says, Apple kills its plan to scan your photos for CSAM. Here's what's next. Now, this is very much so in line with what I was talking about when it comes to farmers and right to repair. John Deere came out with a memorandum of understanding that's functionally useless to farmers. This does not change anything about what it is like to repair these products. And in spite of that, the media uncritically claimed that this was a win. 
And I talked about this in two videos that I did. This John Deere memo, farmers have not won, but that won't stop the news from pretending they did. And I also did a, another rant video while driving talking about this for 28 minutes. The TLDR of that is that farmers have not won right to repair at all. John Deere released a useless MOU that has a bunch of ways for them to get out of it that doesn't even really promise what it is the farmers are looking for. And the media uncritically reported that as a whim. The media did the same thing here with Apple. So if you take a look at what Apple said they would do, it says, based on feedback from customers, advocacy groups, researchers, and others, we have decided to take additional time over the coming months to collect input and make improvements before releasing these critically important child safety features. As Jeffrey says, read the statement carefully again and recognize that at no point did Apple say they reversed course or do not intend to proceed with privacy violating scanning features. As a point of fact, Apple said they still intend to release the features and they consider them critically important. Yet the media and Wired.com said Apple kills its plans. They didn't kill their plans. They literally said that they still intend to release these critically important child safety features. So the media covered for Apple in a way that made a lot of people forget that they were most likely going to release this horrible garbage feature. Apple is very good at writing technically truthful things that say one thing that cause reporters to report a different thing, which is not factual. This becomes an everybody knows sort of thing with a narrative that is widely believed and accepted by the public is not what Apple actually said. Apple PR exploits poor reading comprehension ability, which let's face it, is most of the modern media, while maintaining some sort of imagined moral integrity because they never made any factually false statements during their attempts to explicitly confuse and induce misreporting. To recap, in 2021, Apple said they'd scan your local files using your own hardware in service of the police. People got upset because this is a clear privacy violation and is wholly unjustifiable on any basis whatsoever. Some people speculated that this move was a move by Apple to appease U.S. federal police in advance of their shipping better encryption features, which would otherwise hinder police. Apple said some additional things that did not include, we will scan your local files, but did include a confirmation that they intend to ship such features they consider critically important, and the media misinterpreted or misreported this amended statement, and people calmed down. In late 2022, Apple shipped end-to-end -end encrypted options for iCloud. Today, Apple scanned my local files, and those scanning programs attempted to talk to Apple APIs even though I don't use iCloud, I don't use Apple Photos, and I don't use an Apple ID. This would have happened without my knowledge or consent if I was not running third-party network monitoring software. Who knows what types of media governments will legally require Apple to scan for in the future. Today, it's copy-paste. Tomorrow, it's cartoons of the profit. One thing you can be sure of is that this database of images for which your hardware will now be used to scan will regularly be amended and updated by people who are not you and not accountable to you. This is your first and only warning. Stock Mac OS now invades your privacy via the internet when browsing local files, taking actions that no reasonable person would expect to touch the network. With iCloud and all analytics turned off, no Apple apps launched, this happened in the Finder via Spacebar Preview, and no Apple ID input. You have been notified of this new reality. You will receive no further warnings on the topic. Integrate this data and remember it. Mac OS now contains network-based spyware even with all Apple services disabled. It cannot be disabled via controls within the OS. You must use third-party network filtering software or external devices to prevent it. This was observed on the current version of Mac OS, Mac OS Ventura 13.1. A final reminder, if you've nothing to hide and you've done nothing wrong, the, these are the times where it is most important to limit information transfer to law enforcement. Law enforcement obtaining data on criminals is not a tragedy. Law enforcement investigating innocent people leads to extreme injustice. You should reject all law enforcement surveillance attempts, obviously if you are a criminal, but especially if you are innocent. And I agree with him 110% there, as it says in this stupid paywalled New York Times article that you could totally get around if you use archive.org, a dad took photos of his naked toddler for the doctor, Google flagged him as a criminal. I went over that in detail in this 13 minute video, which is why I don't want these people watching or scanning my shit, which is why Apple should not be doing this, given their entire claim to fame here in the modern day as to why it is they are not a villain, is that they are a privacy respecting company. Privacy, that's iPhone, apparently, because it's not privacy on Mac OS because it does this shit when you open a picture. If you really dig into that New York Times article, because I know somebody's gonna say this, oh, these systems can make mistakes, but there's always a human review process. There was a human review process. The system flagged a photo that was taken for a doctor. And after that photo was flagged, they had some HOA Karen go through that person's photos to try and figure out in context what this was. And they found a picture of the father taking a picture of his son 
being held by a mother who did not have her bra on while she was in bed. And apparently, that's child abuse. These are the people who are going to be able to ruin your life in this instance. The kind of HOA Karen that has a camera right at their window with 200 millimeter zoom, checking out your grass blades that see that they're 3 millimeters taller than they're supposed to be so that they can get you fined and kicked out of the neighborhood. These are the types of people that you are giving the power to ruin your life if you simp for these systems. And you shouldn't be. This is genuinely everywhere. Like, when you look at the video that I did, you have just, like, just the beginning of it. I had, Deere gives farmers the ability to fix their own tractors. John Deere will let farmers repair their own equipment. Deere and co. allow farmers to repair their own equipment. They did all of this without asking a single farmer what they thought of this MOU. And the same thing happens here. Do you think they reached out to any privacy experts? Do you think they even read what Apple said before coming out with this, Apple kills its plan to scan your photos for CSAM? Probably not. Probably not. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is one of the reasons, again, I have Graphene OS on my phone. In my opinion, the best mobile OS of all time. I will leave a link to that in the description down below. Graphene OS on my phone. Linux on my desktop. None of this shit. I'm just, none of this shit. No Windows 11. No stock Android with uh, any of the Google shit. And no Mac OS. I, I, I'm a simple man. I want to run stuff that... I run, not stuff that tries to run me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. As you can see, Oreo won. I tried to avoid him getting to the keyboard because when he gets to the keyboard, he tends to hit the spacebar button and actually turn off my video. I did my best to keep him on, on the arm of the chair instead of over here, and he has defeated me. So that's life. We'll pet the Oreo for a little bit, then end the video. All right, see you in the next one.